This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 301. I tried to quit and it's too hard, part one, by Leo Babauta of zenhabits.net. And I'm your narrator, Dr. Neil. Hey there, happy Monday and welcome to another edition of Optimal Health Daily, where I read some of the best blogs covering health and fitness, just like an audiobook. Today's another post from a regular author here on the show, Leo Babauta of Zen Habits. Now his post is a bit long, so I'm breaking it up into two posts. I'll read the first half today and then the rest tomorrow. Before I get to Leo's post, don't forget that we have four other podcasts where we narrate blogs for you. To check them out, just search for Optimal Living Daily wherever you're hearing this show. As you're soon gonna hear, Leo's gonna talk about breaking habits. So today's inspirational quote comes from the great Mark Twain. Quote, quitting smoking is easy. I've done it a thousand times, end quote. That's so true, isn't it? In the beginning, it's kind of easy, and then it's maintaining the habit that's really difficult. I'll talk more about that a little bit later. So for now, let's hear part one of Leo's post as we optimize your life. I tried to quit and it's too hard, part one by Leo Babauta of zenhabits.net. You might have uttered the title of this post before. I know I did when I tried to quit smoking and when I considered giving up meat, cheese, sugar, etc. Quitting something can seem incredibly hard, so much so that we don't even want to put ourselves through the suffering. Have you tried giving up alcohol, marijuana, biting your nails, complaining, cigarettes, junk food? I can confirm that it's hard to quit an addiction, but there are several things that stand in our way. One, the physical addiction. This is hard, but it only lasts a few days. Fortunately, I can tell you that if you really put your mind to it, you can do anything hard for a few days. Two, the reliance on it as a coping mechanism. This is a problem because we're so used to using the addiction as a crutch when we're stressed or sad or things are difficult or when we just need to socialize. Fortunately, there are plenty of other healthier ways to cope. And three, you don't believe you can do it. This is the worst one because if you give in to this obstacle, the other two are not conquerable. Fortunately, this one is entirely self-caused and so the solution is entirely within our hands. Because it's so important, we're going to focus on the last obstacle first. You think you can't. You've heard of the little engine that could. Well, our brains are the opposite. They're the little engines that think they can't. And they are amazing at rationalizing why. Just try giving up something that you rely on. At first, you might start to think, oh, this isn't so bad. In fact, I'm kind of excited about it. But then, when things to get a bit difficult, your mind tends to think things like, this is too hard, I can't do it, I wanna give up. And then you start to ask, why the hell am I doing this to myself? Life is too short to suffer so much. Then you think, just once, one little time, won't matter, no one will know, one exception won't hurt anything, it's the long run that matters. Except that one exception can hurt. It leads you to the same rationalization the next time. And then, in your mind, you're not quitting anymore. Our minds get in our way. So what can we do? Well, luckily, this is entirely fixable. We just have to, one, examine our beliefs, and two, change them. Yes, our beliefs are changeable. I know because I've changed numerous beliefs and tested those new beliefs with self-experiments and found the new ones to be true. The old beliefs will be true too, if you believe them. Experience will bear out the beliefs getting in your way, if you believe them. But experience can prove better beliefs to be true too, if you're willing to give them a try. Let's take some examples of beliefs that stand in our way. Old belief. I'm a smoker who's trying to quit, but it's hard. New belief. I don't smoke. I'm a non-smoker. It's who I am. Here you're changing your self-identity. Old belief. I can't do it if it's too hard. New belief. I've done hard things before. I can do this if it's hard. In fact, I'll take it as a personal challenge. Old belief. It won't hurt to do it just once. New belief it will hurt my trust in myself, which is more important to me than some momentary pleasure. Old belief, I need my fill in the blank, cigarette, beer, meat, cheese, sweets. New belief, I don't need it. It's unnecessary and causing me harm. Old belief, I have a complicated emotional past with food and can't do it. New belief, I can focus on the moment instead of the past. I have the power to decide what goes in my mouth. It's not complicated, it's simple. One step at a time. Old belief, this makes me feel better, comforted, 
more pleasure, more joy, etc. New belief. It actually makes me feel worse. I don't want to do that to myself. I'm going to love myself by doing things that are better for me. Now again, these are only examples. There may be numerous other beliefs that you have about the issue of quitting, but you can't change them if you don't know they're there. Pay attention to what you're saying to yourself. Examine your beliefs and hold them lightly. They aren't necessarily true, and in fact, I don't believe they're true at all. It's just the scared child in you wanting to be comforted. To be continued. You just listened to part one of the post titled, I Tried to Quit and It's Too Hard by Leo Babauta of zenhabits.net. And like I said at the top of the show, I'll read the rest for you on tomorrow's show. So like I predicted, Leo even mentioned the novelty of changing a new behavior. In the beginning, it's kind of new, maybe it's even fun, but it's something you're motivated to do. But then it's the maintenance that gets in the way, right? Now something else he mentioned, for some people, when they allow themselves to have that one slice of pizza or have that piece of cake or that one cookie, when they've been doing so well staying away from it, what happens to some folks is then it sends them down that spiral and now they're back to their old habits. Not everybody is like that though. Some folks are not necessarily all or nothing. They can enjoy a cookie here and there and still, for the most part, maintain their habits. So this is a very individualized thing. If you know by having one piece of cake, one cookie, a little bowl of ice cream is gonna send you down your old path, then it might be best to stay away from it right now. But if you know you can indulge a little bit and still continue on your overall trend towards whatever goals you've set for yourself, then that's okay too. And Leo's absolutely right. Our brains are actually telling us constantly that we cannot do something. This is for normal, healthy people. Most folks, anywhere from 60 to 70% of their thoughts running through their heads each day are negative towards themselves. They're self-critical. And again, this is healthy people. So our norm as human beings is to be negative and critical of ourselves. So we need to spin that. We need to change that or reframe it in a way that's beneficial and motivating for us. All right, I'll continue my little rant tomorrow after I read the rest of Leo's post. Now really quickly before I go, definitely check out and subscribe to our other shows if you enjoy this one. You can hear a lot more topics for free just like this show. Just search for Optimal Living Daily in your favorite podcast app to find the other ones. That's it from me. Thank you, as always, for listening today and every day. I'll be back, as I said, to finish up this post. So I'll see you there tomorrow where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, and together we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift, as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us, and remember, your optimal life awaits.